Hi, and welcome to our video, 17.3 Phase Changes. A lot of this stuff should be reviewed from middle school. I remember teaching it when I was teaching there. So hopefully you'll remember some of it, or at least uh, it should come back fairly quickly. All right, so first we're going to look at the different types of phase changes. So here we have, right, S for solid, L for liquid, and G for gas. And the most common example that I always like to think of is for good old H2O. So, right, water is a solid as ice, and when that solid becomes a liquid, we call it melting. When that liquid becomes a gas, we call it boiling or vaporization. Right, the liquid is becoming a vapor. Okay, now to go the other way, when a gas becomes a liquid, that is condensation. The most common place you see condensation, drinking a cold beverage on a warm day, and you get those water droplets that form on the outside of the glass. Right? It's not because the glass is leaking, it's the water vapor in the air is condensing to form a liquid. <coughs> and a liquid becoming a solid is freezing. Right, when you have liquid water and you want to make solid water ice, where do you put it? In the freezer. So that is freezing. Now there's two others that we don't really think about that much, but they're somewhat important. A solid can directly become a gas. Now a very common way of demonstrating this is dry ice. Dry ice, which is solid carbon dioxide and at atmospheric pressure it doesn't ever enter the liquid phase it just goes from a solid directly to a gas and it doesn't leave any liquid behind that's why it's called dry ice but you've seen sublimation before even though you didn't quite realize it uh, in the winter time when it snows and still stays below freezing the snow slowly goes away now here in long island usually it'll get warm enough that it'll melt right or we'll get a good rain but if it doesn't the snow goes directly from the solid form of snow to a gas to water vapor the opposite of that when a gas directly becomes a solid is called deposition all right now for these phase these phase changes Right, a lot of times it seems counterintuitive which way is endothermic and which way is exothermic. But a solid becoming a gas is endothermic because you have to add heat. Right? If you have an ice cube, if you want it to become water, you have to add heat to it. You have to warm it up. Endothermic. When you add heat to the ice, the ice absorbs the heat. So the heat goes in. If you have water and you want to boil it, you put it on the stove in a pot, hopefully, and turn on the heat. You are adding heat. Going the other way, from a gas to a liquid, during condensation, it is exothermic. So it gives off heat. Pay attention this summer. Hopefully you'll still remember this then. Right When you do take a cold drink and leave it out, if it's a very humid day and there's a lot of condensation on the outside of the glass, your drink warms up more or fairly quickly because as the gas condenses to become a liquid, heat is actually leaving that and going into your drink, warming it up. Okay? And then the same way when you freeze liquid water, it gives off the heat. The heat leaves and the water becomes ice. Uh, next, we're going to take a look at a heating slash cooling curve. And for the most part, when it's going up this way, when we're adding heat, so this is time, right? And we're adding heat over time. Okay? This is referred to as a heating curve. You might sometimes see a cooling curve, which is the other way around, where it's actually cooling down the whole time. All right, so the different parts of here, A, B, this is when it's in the solid phase. From B to C is when it is melting. And here you're gonna have some solid 
and some liquid. Usually at this point in time, there's more solid. At this point in time, there's more liquid. Until finally we hit this point here, and from C to D, it's in the liquid phase. Then we have boiling. Okay, once again, here there's going to be more liquid. Here there's going to be more gas. Until finally it enters the gas phase. All right, so we have when we're going this way, we have melting. We're going this way, we have boiling or vaporization. If we go backwards, right, and start cooling it, we're going to go backwards, right, this is a gas. Going this way, it's condensation. Liquid's cooling, cooling, cooling. Going this way, it's called freezing. Now notice how the temperature staying constant during the phase changes. All right? That's because the kinetic energy is not changing. So if the kinetic energy does not change, the temp does not change. What's actually changing is the potential energy. So heat is being stored in there, but the kinetic energy is not changing. All right, like always, there's some math to do. So there's a couple of things on the reference tables that are important. On table T, where all the formulas are, right, we already did Q equals M C delta T. Well, there's also, Q equals M times the heat of fusion, which is the mass of the substance times the heat of fusion. And Q is the mass of the substance times the heat of vaporization. Heat of fusion is for freezing and melting. Heat of vaporization is for boiling and condensation. Okay? And for water, the heat of fusion is 334 joules per gram. The heat of vaporization is 2260 joules per gram. All right, so let's try one of these. How many joules would it take to melt 100 grams of water at 0 degrees Celsius? Okay, so melting, so it's going to be heat of fusion formula. So Q equals MHF. Well, Q is what we're looking for. Mass is 100 grams, and our heat of fusion is 334 joules per gram. All right, so nice and easy plug and chug. Mass is 100 grams, heat of fusion 334 joules per gram, cancel, cancel, and we end up with 33400 zero, zero joules. And very similar, how many joules would it take to boil 100 grams of water at 100 degrees Celsius? So it's the same amount of water, but now Q equals M times the heat of vaporization. Q equals, that's what we're looking for, mass still 100 grams. Now it's the heat of vaporization, which is 2260 joules per gram. Well, we can plug these in, 100 grams times 2260 joules per gram, grams cancel. This time, we get 226000 joules, much bigger. Why? Because the line, right, when we had our heating curve, the line for vaporization was much longer than the line for melting. So it uses a lot more heat. All right, that one was nice and short. Not too much to go on there. And I will see you guys at school.